welcome everyone. I am so excited to share what we've been building here at Acora. Happy RTE and welcome to the React Native UI Kit session. Before we begin, some things about myself. My name is Akansh Arora. I am a developer evangelist working on JavaScript here at Agora. I'm primarily focusing on React and React Native, and I'm also maintaining the Agora React Native UI Kit. If you like, you can follow me on Twitter. And let's jump right in to our session. So before trying to answer what the UI kit is, I think it's important to understand why the UI kit came to be. So Agora already provides a really easy to use React Native SDK, but after working with a lot of developers over the last few months, we realized there's two big challenges that can be solved much more elegantly using this solution. So you see this wall of text behind me, that's some four, 500 lines of code that inevitably get introduced into your code base when you're starting out. So you might argue that starting out is easy. You can just get started like say 60, 70 lines of code. But as soon as you start adding new features like muting yourself, um, organizing the UI and things like that, you do add more code to build those features out, right? And we at Agora thought we can do much better than that. So. What you see on your screen right now is what we've done. We've reduced all of that junk code that isn't required. And um, so I was mentioning how we've taken 500 lines of code right down to these three simple lines. You have this high level Agora UI kit component. And once you render it out, you see this video call pop in right into your app. So just to emphasize on what we're trying to do is we're taking existing apps. And if you want to add an RT experience, we don't want you focusing on the nitty gritties of integrating video call, managing the load, doing the UI. We want you to focus on what you do best, as mentioned in the keynote, is build your own experience. And the UI kit handles the rest. So to, to enable that for all of the users, we're trying to make the things as customizable as possible. And we'll talk about that in just a second. So just to reiterate, the UI kit is a reactive library built on top of a chorus SDK that give you a fully featured cross-platform and customizable real-time engagement experience built right into your app. So before we move forward, let's quickly take a look at how easy it is to build a video calling app from scratch right now. So I'm going to share a video with you. The very simple functional component Let's go ahead and import the Agora UI kit component from our library. And our task is very simple. We want to render a video call here between this view whenever our state video call is set to true and unmounted whenever it's false using this null. So let's start writing our code. We can use the Agora UI kit component from our library and render it. Once we prettify, we see there's an error. So this needs something called RTC props. We don't know what that is yet, but let's try to define something called props. And we have TypeScript, so we can use props interface as the type. And let's define the RTC props inside it. So let's also define it to be an object, but we see that there's some error. And that is because we're missing the app ID and the channel. So let's add in our Agora app ID it's a string and go to app ID here and let's define our channel. So we'll call our channel to be test. People on the same channel can communicate with each other. Now let's pass in our RTC props to the UI kit component. We'll do that. So immediately if we prefer, we see that there's basically no errors and that's realistically all that we need to get the video call working. But just for the sake of this demo, let's add another callback so that we can unmount a video call component whenever someone clicks the end call button. So we'll define end call callback and it will be a function that sets our state to false. So that's about it. It's and pass in the callback to our UI kit component. We'll do props.callbacks 
and that's about it. Let's try out our app and see see what it looks like. We have the Android app running on an emulator on the left. If I open up the app on my iOS device, we can see that the video call starts working immediately. We have local buttons to mute, unmute our video and audio, and we have a button to switch our camera. We also can magnify people to the main screen if we want to. And we have a button to end the call. We can also mute, unmute remote users on a local device. So that's all the code it took to build a fully featured app. And let's go ahead and see how we can customize it. Uh, we have a built-in customizable UI. So what you saw is all out of the box, no UI code required. We're abstracting away all the video calling logic from that from your from your site. So you can just render the single component and it handles everything else. And when required, we still let you take control of the intricacies and we'll look at that next. So let's have some, if we have any questions as of now, let's quickly go ahead and answer them before we dive into the next section. So if you have any questions, please leave them on the right side below the chat panel. There's a questions button and you can type them in and we'll stop again at the end of the session to answer any of the questions we cannot take right now. Let's wait a couple of seconds. I don't see any questions as of now. So maybe it's good to move on. There's one by Max which says, which platform does this build for? Uh, so it builds both for Android and iOS, uh, which React Native supports out of the box. And you can have that same code base building for both these platforms. Um, we need asks, do you need to install any extra libraries? And the answer to that is you do not. Um, the React Native UI kit is built on Agora's SDK. So it internally requires the Agora SDK to build and you don't have to install anything else apart from that. Uh, Blaze asks, how can it choose between React UI kit versus iOS and Android? Uh, that's something that would depend on your use case. So if you're building cross-platform, then probably React UI kit is a good option, or you can even look at the Flutter UI kit, whatever you're comfortable working with, uh, especially if you're a JavaScript developer, React Native is fairly easy to get into. And uh, if you're coming from a Kotlin background, maybe you pick up the Android UI kit instead. So it would completely depend on what uh, platform you're easy to like, what is easy for you to work with. And uh, that I think that answers that. Um, Amit asks, will it work with React Native for web? Uh, Amit, it doesn't work with React Native for web as of now, but uh, we are discussing plans on how we can support React Native for web in the future. So maybe keep an eye out and we'll have that working soon. Thank you so much for your questions. Let's move ahead and talk about the customization that I've been chatting so much about. So with the UI kit, we're doing two big things. One is using props to customize functionality. So the UI kit has a lot of features built in and we're letting you pick what you need and what features you want and what you don't. So you can enable and disable them using simple props uh, which we'll take a look next. And the second big thing that I'm really excited to show everyone is how you can customize the entire UI without ever diving into like JavaScript code. You just write in CSS overrides and you can customize everything from the video views itself to the buttons, the icons, colors, get things around, move the layout, change things. Everything is extremely customizable and we'll take a look at that after. So talking functionality, we have our app from before that we just demoed. This is the simple Agora UI kit high level component that we just talked about. And that takes care of the video call aspect. But what if we want to build in a live streaming scenario? And for that, all you need to do is add these two lines. So you define the mode as live broadcasting and you define your role either as a broadcaster or the audience. So broadcasters can transmit their video feeds and audience can only receive them. So these two lines, you have a live streaming app on your hands. And we at Agora have been talking about how important security is to us. And for that, we use tokens. And we've heard challenges from developers trying to build it on backend because we are a primarily front-end based SDK. So we don't expect our developers to have a lot of backend experience. And that's okay. If you already have a backend setup, you can pass in your token. 
or we also provide a token service that you can deploy quickly using one click and just pass in your deployed URL. The UI kit itself will fetch the tokens, renew the tokens when they expire, and manage all of that logic by itself. You don't have to worry about tokens anymore. And we're really excited to pass this on to all, all the users next. Lastly, for features, um, I briefly mentioned Active Speaker in Dual Stream. So we have this feature where if someone's actively talking, you bring them up to the big screen. And to set that up, all you need to do is set it to true in the props, and the UI kit will maintain that UI throughout your application or your video call. And if your users are not having the best internet connectivity throughout the call, it might not be a great experience for them trying to use the app with like a high video quality being transmitted. So for that, we have something called dual stream mode, which you can fall back to a lower quality video till your internet recovers and is able to support uh, the good quality video that is being transmitted by your Facebook post. And you even have an audio only mode that we've demoed here using this enum. So you pass in that and the UI kit automatically manages the fallback to lower quality and bringing back to higher quality when it's required. Talking about callbacks, this is the last piece of the puzzle in terms of bringing your UI kit to a whole circle. So right now we've taken a look at how we can pass in data to the UI kit to customize your experience. But what if you want the UI kit to change the other parts of your app? A simple example would be to try to display a toast notification whenever someone clicks the mute icon on the UI kit to mute themselves. And to do that, you can pass in your own custom function to that event. So here we have the local mute audio event, which is an SDK event. And you pass in your own custom function to display the toast. And whenever the SDK triggers that event, your function gets called and you display a toast to the end user. So you can build different things. You can build a user counter to see how many people are active on the call and all of these different features using data from the UI itself. Now, this is my favorite part, uh, talking about customization. So we have our app from the pool on the left. And if we want to change the UI, we can just write CSS, right? That's, that's what I mentioned. And I've written some CSS on the right that you can see, and it completely changes what the app looks like on the left. So to change things, you just have properties like local button styles, which has an end call button. So to change the appearance to say a red color, you can just pass in background color red, background color blue, and that will affect the end call button in the UI kit. You can change the icons. You can add padding, margins, or everything that's possible with React Native CSS. You can pass those in, override uh, what the look and feel of the UI kit is, and you have that working just without writing any JavaScript. And I'm super excited uh, what you guys built with your UI. Just to compare, uh, we have the two different apps, an out-of-box approach or a custom style. And I, I think they're very strikingly different. So we think that when you add this UI kit into your existing app, you'll be able to follow your design schemes, follow your design guides, and customize the UI to just match the appearance of your app. and follow a cohesive experience right from the start to the real-time engagement here. And you're not limited to that. We also have a built-in grid system. So what you see on the two ends is a grid. And to make the experience really immersive, you can get rid of the buttons if you're so desired, or you can just use the grid um, normally. And we have three different app examples, all running the UI kit um, on the app And this is the last bit that I really want to stress on. And this is a little technical. So we'll dive into a, a bit of details on how the UI kit is made. And if there's something the UI kit cannot do out of the box, how to get that features built in. So the UI kit is based on a very modular architecture. We have these small pieces that you can think of as Lego building up to that Agora UI kit component that we've been using so far throughout the presentation. So Let's divide them into two pieces. There's the data components and there's the UI bits. So since UI bits are easier to explain, let's talk about them first. Uh, you see the local controls on the bottom. That's one big chunk of the UI kit. And that itself is based on smaller pieces like the end call button, the switch camera button. And you're not limited to things that we provide. You can even make your own custom buttons and add them to local controls. So Things like these, the grid system itself is a component which is built on top of a video view and 
all of this together gets composed into the Agora UI kit component that you see. So for some reason, if there's something that the CSS uh, overrides cannot help you achieve, you can take in these smaller individual pieces, pick them together as Lego, build your own custom layout, build your own custom experience. But how do we power these UI pieces with the data from the UI kit? So to render a user's video, we need the UID. So how do you access that? We have the data components at help here. We have data components like the RTC context, which is based on a uh, standard practice of using React context, which gives you access to this data. And if I go to the next slide, you can see this consumer from that context. And when you map over these users array, you get this object, which gives you access to the UID. And you can use this data to show if the user is displaying the video, if the video is paused, if the audio is muted, what the UID is, and all of these things like that. So we're trying to make things really easy, but we're also trying to give you control. We're abstracting away as much as we can and get you started with three simple lines, but we're also trying to give you as much control as you need. So the idea of reusing these components is available to everyone for all different use cases. So I'm going to pause for questions here. If we have something that you want to find out, I can go ahead and answer it now. Let's wait a couple of seconds. There's a questions tab right next to the chat tab. And if you have any questions, you can pass them in there and we try once them. Uh, Vineet asks, can we have custom elements added to the decomposed UI kit? You can, that's that's the power of the UI kit and um, our architecture. So I'm going back a few slides to show you how the Agora UI kit component is made. Uh, it's all based on the RTC configure context, grid video component and local controls. So let's say I wanted to add a user counter. I would just add a text component, map over how big the UID array is inside the context, and I can just render that text. So you can build your own custom components, have them rendered inside the provider or the context, and get access to this data to like render your own things. Hopefully that answers your question. Do we have any more questions? Ibrahim asks, can I use Banuba with Agora writing native code without writing native code for added Banio separately? Uh, the UI kit doesn't suppose, support face, face filters as of now. Um, basically, if Banuba has, an, has a React Native SDK, you can do that. But from what I know, you probably would have to write in platform specific code using Android and iOS to get the face filters functionality. But if there's a way to improve that, we'll take a look and try to add it to the UI kit. So that's a great idea. Thanks for that question, Ibrahim. If that is all, I'll end my presentation here. If you have any more questions, please feel to reach us out on dev.agora.io. You can follow me on Twitter, ask questions there. We have a Slack channel. So if you have trouble building with the UI kit, we're happy to help you there. Um, there's a QR code on the screen right now. You can scan that to get access to the UI kit repo, uh, the backend service that I mentioned for tokens, um, our Slack channel. And next up, we have Tardis presenting the Flutter UI kit. So I'm really excited for that session as well. Uh, just gonna take a last look at any questions and then we can get done. Thanks so much for joining. Wish you all a very happy afternoon.